Hey everybody, this is Erica, the technology nerd who likes to film stuff, and before me I have an iPhone 6 Plus. I hope to get my hands on a regular iPhone 6 a little bit later and take a look at that as well, but we've got the iPhone 6 Plus for now. And what I want to do is talk a little bit about the user experience, what it's been like so far to use this huge oversized iPhone. I want to compare the size to other devices that I have. This is the Xperia Z Ultra. If you think this is big, this is much, much bigger. I also want to do a pocket test and I want to talk a little bit about the display calibration as well. I did manage to measure the display. The first thing that I can say about just handling this device is that it is quite large and I do have other devices with a 5.5 inch display, but this one just feels so much larger in comparison because of those bezels that it has. And also, with the whole body being made out of aluminum, it does feel quite slippery. It's very thin and slippery, so there is never a moment that I don't feel like I'm scared that I'm going to drop it. So the first thing I'm going to be doing is getting a case for this investment. Yes, I purchased this. So what is the deal? Why would anyone want an iPhone this large? Well, in all honesty, I have several Android phones that are almost just this size or are larger. So I am quite used to using phones of this size and also it's a little bit better spec than the iPhone 6 that came out. I think that most people will be just happy with the iPhone 6, but for people who want to have a little bit better battery life, because I'm hearing that the iPhone 6 has similar battery life to the 5S, which is really not so good, and also, if you want a full 1080p display, this one has it. If you want a bigger display, obviously, this one has it. And it's also got optical image stabilization, which some of you know is good for taking steady video. It's also good for taking clearer, sharper images, especially in regards to low lighting. So for me, without question, I ended up getting the 6 Plus, but I held the iPhone 6, and I think that I do like that one a bit better. If the specs were exactly the same and it had better battery life on the 6, I definitely would have gone with the 6. I think that the iPhone 6 feels like what Apple intended it to. It feels like a proper size. It feels really good in the hand. And then you've got the 6 Plus that kind of just feels like an oversized afterthought just to appease the people on the market who want a larger display. So let's go ahead and look at some devices for size comparison. So looking at some of the sizes here, we've got a good bit of phones, a good many phones. So in regards to screen size, I'm sure people will be very thrilled to have a larger display, but the thing that I am noticing and what I've already commented on is that it feels kind of weird. Apple didn't really focus on the ergonomics of this device. They essentially just blew up the iPhone 6 to being a larger device without much thought of how easy it is to handle. This phone feels quite top heavy and I think that that's probably what makes me feel like I'm going to drop it. When holding a large Android device like the OnePlus One or even the Galaxy Note 3, it feels right in hand. The ergonomics of it is just good. So even though these have the same size display and even though this is not much bigger than the OnePlus One, I think that the iPhone 6 Plus ends up feeling monumentally larger than some of these phones that have the same size display. Even when looking at the LG G3, you can check out the design footprint. You can see you really don't need such a large device when you've got a 5.5 inch display. I'm sure this is just Apple's thing, but I hope if they continue on with this iPhone 6 Plus line that they will do some redesigning for the larger phone because it does need it. Whoa, sorry for the random interruption, but as I am editing this video, I am seeing that yes, Apple actually does need to redesign the iPhone 6 Plus. I am seeing all over the place now that it's very easy to bend the iPhone 6 Plus by just keeping it in your front pocket, not your back pocket and sitting on it, but the front pocket and bending your leg is enough to end up bending the chassis of the device. Lua of Unbox Therapy was kind enough to let me include some of his screen caps to show you what I am talking about. Now my question here is, is the same thing going to be happening to the iPhone 6 because of its smaller footprint? Will it be able to bend as easily with just tweaking it with the hand? Or will it also bend by keeping it in the front pocket as well? This is definitely something I'm going to keep my eye on. I can only imagine that Apple could do some recalls here. This is really not good. Not good. So just to show you what this phone looks like in comparison to many devices that I have on the desk, again here is the OnePlus One. You can see that the iPhone 6 Plus is taller. You can see it's got that chin down at the bottom, but it is quite thin. 
Here we have it next to the Galaxy Note 3, which actually has a 5.7 inch display. And you can see that it's still even taller than the Galaxy Note 3, although the Note 3 is just a bit wider, and the Note 3 is also thicker as well. You can see that difference in display size there. Then we've got a device like the Xperia Z Ultra, which has a 6.4 inch display. This one is the mother load of all huge devices. In terms of thickness, these are actually very similar. Comparing these two is kind of just for laughs, so you can see how big this is in comparison to other very large phones on the market. iPhone 6 Plus is still considered a phone, where this is just a phablet, tablet, just, I just call it a tablet. As for the LG G3, I think that this is the smartest design language that I've seen for such a large display. This one feels great to hold in hand, and it feels great to use, great to type on. It's not top heavy. I have to give LG an A plus for doing such a good job with the ergonomics of this phone. It's also light. I find that the iPhone 6 Plus is kind of beefy feeling. It does not feel like a light phone at all. And there you go. You can see the thickness there. What else have we got on this desk? We've also got an HTC One M8. You can see that it's quite a bit larger than the M8 there. Checking out the thickness. And then you've got the older brother here, well actually the baby brother when looking at the size is the iPhone 5S. And more and more, as I'm looking back at the iPhone 5S, I am missing the size. If it weren't for some of the specs that are in here, I would totally go for the 6. I would be in the store right now exchanging it for that. I'm sorry Apple, but I'm just not a fan. It's not the size that bothers me, it's that the ergonomics are just not good. So in terms of everyday use using this phone, this is a two-handed affair, especially for people who've got little tiny hands like me. Apple did add an interesting feature where you can double tap that home button to try to get to some of the other rows that were at the top previously, but eh, eh, you can see I still can't reach it, so it doesn't work all that well. I did go underneath the assistive touch setting and turn it on. I was hoping that there would have been some other accessibility feature. Like maybe I could simply just double tap on the home button here, but that brings up the task switcher. So it seems that the only way to activate this ability is to go all the way downward to the bottom awkwardly and then double tap. Sometimes I can do it and sometimes I can't. Maybe in the future Apple will figure out other things that will make this more easy to use with one hand. But for right now, I just ignore that double tap feature. It really doesn't do me any good. And sometimes you have to tap it just right to get it to happen. Come on now. What I think would also be nice is if Apple included some type of a double tap ability to turn on the display. Because I do have smaller hands, you can see if I'm holding it in the middle, which is where it feels most balanced, it's I can't reach that home button. And also I have to choke upward quite a bit to touch that on button. So a double tap feature would have been really nice. Now as for the lay on the table design, a lot of people are worried about that camera nub that's protruding. I really feel that it should be flush with the body. Really, they should have just made this thicker, put a bigger battery. It would have made the most sense. Not sure what Apple is trying to prove here other than just look at us, look how thin we are. So when you set it on that desk, of course the worry is, oh, it's protruding. So if I touch, it's going to rock. What I pointed out in my unboxing video, though, is that when you set a phone on the desk, you're most likely going to be typing on the keyboard, so you'll be tapping on it. And in this part of the phone down at the bottom, it doesn't rock at all, so it's not really a problem for that. Also, the lens that we have on here should be sapphire, so the sapphire crystal should not get scratched by things on the desk. Although I can imagine that this metal could get a bit scratched. If this bothers you, just get a case. This thing really should be in a case anyway because it does feel quite slippery. The buttons on this device are nice and clicky. They're actually almost too clicky. You can hear that they're quite loud. That's just me being picky, honestly. But yes, quite clicky and loud. I do find the vibration to be quite satisfying. It's not something that I'm going to miss. Another thing that I am noticing with this phone is that they didn't make everything very smooth. I can see that they've machined all these little holes here, and we've also got a lightning port. But what I can see with this lightning port is that it's not completely flush with the body. So sometimes I find it to be a little bit sharp. 
I like to hold my phone with my pinky along the bottom because I've got small hands and it keeps it secure in place. But I find that it's a little scratchy feeling. It's not an issue that I had with the iPhone 5S. It feels nice and smooth along the bottom. I can call this picky, but I would have preferred it if they machined everything nice and smooth. It's even a bit rough along this headphone jack. That is if your fingers get in the way. So far what I am really liking though is this rounded glass. It feels great when you swipe your finger across this display, even though it's huge. I feel like I can just simply touch the side and it's very easy to control this way. I don't have to reach my finger over and touch the center of the display. No, the sensitivity along the side is actually pretty decent and my finger just rolls across the page. It's very comfortable. It's the same kind of deal that we have on the Moto X. It feels great on this as well. So I'm a fan of this 2.5D glass, but just like on the Galaxy Note 2 that was rounded as well, I'm afraid that this is the first thing that's going to hit flat on the ground. And if that glass hits flat on the ground first instead of a bezel, it's going to crack. I've seen plenty of drop tests already, and while the body holds up well, it's going to depend on how it falls on the ground for whether the glass is going to crack or not. I'm thinking that this is probably Gorilla Glass 3, that same 2.5D glass on the Moto X. I think that Apple just hides the name of the supplier and calls it something else for marketing reasons or whatever. Now while Gorilla Glass 3 doesn't scratch as easily as other versions of Gorilla Glass, if you drop it and it hits a rock and gets past that layer of compressive stress as they call it, that layer of compressive stress is just ever so thin. If it gets past that layer with a rock or a pebble or whatever, it's going to shatter. So Gorilla Glass 3 is the same hardness, and the possibility of it to shatter is still just the same. The feeling, though, still is magnificent. Now as for performance, that's something that I am saving more for another video. I did notice, though, that sometimes things are not entirely smooth. I want to check out the 6 and see what's going on with that, but I see sometimes that in the UI it does drop a frame here or there. That's not something that I'm used to seeing. So I'm happy to say when looking at my first impressions of battery life that it's pretty good. It lasts me easily through the day. This is a very large improvement from my iPhone 5S, which I would sometimes have to charge two or three times a day just to get through the day. And of course this has better battery life than the 6 because the battery inside this is nearly twice as much. The only downside here though is that the charger that's included with it is a one amp charger. And with the one amp charger, I swear, this thing is taking three hours to charge. This thing does not charge quickly at all. I'm going to do a benchmark to see exactly how long this takes to charge, but it does feel like it's three hours, maybe even more. So this is not a phone that you're going to be able to quickly top off on the go. Now I did a little bit of reading around the interwebs and I find that actually you can use a 2 amp charger and get this thing to charge much quicker. So in the past iPhones were restricted to drawing only about 5 watts of power, but it looks like you're able to get 12 watts of power. So yes, this thing really can be charged quicker. What I'll probably do is grab one of my 2 amp adapters for one of my Android phones and just go with that. I think that the number one thing I can't wait for in terms of improvement on this device that can be improved is seeing higher resolution applications. This is Google Chrome right here and that scaling is just not convincing to me. So many things in so many different applications right now just look fuzzy and it just gives me the impression that I paid, what, near a thousand dollars for a phone that just doesn't look up to par with other devices. This needs to be fixed. I really don't know how long it's going to take to see applications with higher resolution, but on many things right now I feel very far from using my dream phone. Before moving on to the fun of the pocket test, let's talk about the display which occupies most of this phone. So we've got a 1080p display, 5.5 inches LCD IPS, 401 pixels per inch, and it looks nice and dense at this size. When looking at the iPhone 5 or 5S, you can see the difference in the pixel density. So I am quite satisfied with the pixel density of this display. Another nice thing about this display is that it gets incredibly bright. It gets over 500 nits. Insanely bright. And also the viewing angles are really good. It's very easy to see in direct sunlight. As for the calibration of this display, let's start off with positive things. What I am very happy with is the grayscale calibration. 
I'm really happy that Apple doesn't do some batshit crazy things with the Gamma. If you look at things like the Galaxy S5 or the entire Galaxy series, or even the Sony series, or even the LG G2, or even the HTC One M8, all of those manufacturers like to do interesting little things with the Gamma. They like to boost the saturation with the Gamma. They like to make the shadows darker with the Gamma. They like to add an interesting contrasty pop S-curve with the Gamma where they make gamma low in highlights and make gamma higher in shadows and makes it pop. Adds like an artificial contrasty look. And Apple doesn't do that, thankfully. So for the first time in a while with all these smartphones that I've been playing with, except for the iPhone 5S, things just look decent. I'm able to watch dark scenes and they look good. They look really good. The contrast ratio on this display is over a thousand. So I have to commend Apple on those things. Also, there is no light bleeding on this display and the uniformity of this display looks perfect when you're looking at white anyway. I don't see yellowish and bluish and the display being two-toned or whatnot. Everything just looks really, really nice. This is a really nice display. One thing that makes me grumpy though is that I don't like being lied to. Right underneath their spec sheet for both iPhone 6 and iPhone 6 Plus, it says full sRGB standard. Now, if it were not worded this way, I would have taken it to mean that it meets the full gamut, the full color space of sRGB, but it says full sRGB standard, so I'm also assuming that they mean it's got the correct white point as well, and they even claim in other places on their website that it has the proper white balance. They are talking about the white point. No, no, it does not actually. This is not a D65 white point. It's way too blue. It's very wrong and insulting to say that this is full sRGB with a color temperature that's almost 7300 Kelvin. I would expect it to be more along 6500 Kelvin. It would look a lot more neutral. It would look a lot more warm. Whenever you've got a bluish white point like this display has, it tends to give the entire display in all the colors a bit of a blue cast to them. So no, Apple, you are not displaying full sRGB standard. So even if they're not tweaking the colors and doing crazy things with the colors, and they're not doing crazy things with the gamma, they still have a very bluish white point, so it still doesn't look right. For the life of me, I can't understand why they would claim full sRGB standard and not make the white point the right thing. I'm sure that they could have. It probably would have been very easy for them to do. And it's not just my display. I went and looked at many different stores and many different iPhone 6 Plus devices and even 6 devices, and they are all bluish. All of them are, every single one that I saw. So going to many different stores and looking at many different devices, I can consider that a random sample enough to represent a large population of iPhones that are quite bluish. It's actually even more blue than the iPhone 5S before it. If they would just fix that white point, it would bring down the brightness a little bit. But still, they're only claiming about 500 nits anyway. It would just make sense if they could get the white point correct. So I really can't say what their problem is here. But that is my one disappointment really with this display. My one disappointment is that they make a claim and they promise things, a lot like Samsung seems to promise things, but they don't hold up to it. I, I don't know why they do this. All right, I haven't done one of these in a while, but we're going to do a pocket test. Here we have the iPhone 6 Plus. You can just see just how large this is, especially in comparison to my tiny body. So here we have girl jean pockets, and the shameful thing about girl jean pockets is that they're never very deep. So take a gander at that. That's just, that's just pure sexy right there. That's so attractive. Let's go ahead and take the least worst case scenario on the other side. This is the 5S. Just look at the difference. Look at that. That's just hilarious. That's okay. I'm cool enough to rock that. I'll just walk around like this. From now on, I'm going to have two phones in my pocket, a large Android phone and an iPhone at the same time. So this is not so bad. This is hilarious. Let's go ahead with the worst case scenario now. This is the Z Ultra. If I can get this in my pocket. Sometimes, honestly, I walk around with this thing. I went to the Motorola event just walking around like this. So check that out. It could be a lot worse than this. You see, you can see just how much worse this can actually get, but that's, let's just move on. So in the back pocket, that's what that looks like in the back pocket. It's really not any more comfortable than putting it in the front. Here's this in the back pocket. 
It's just a no-no. You can see that's just not okay. So now we've got the OnePlus One and the iPhone 6 Plus. You can see still just how much taller this one is. Maybe no one will see it. I can fake it. Except for now I've got some corner bulges. It doesn't look quite right. <laughs> so next to my tiny body, here is the Note 3 and also the iPhone 6 Plus. Again, putting in pockets. There you go. It seems that nothing is quite as tall as the 6 Plus, besides the Z Ultra. And the G3, which might be one of the more comfortable of all of them, of all the large Android devices, because it's not as big as most of them. I think I can actually hide this one more convincingly with my shirt. So you can see here that of the bigger phones, this one does look pretty much the most ridiculous, except for the Xperia Z Ultra. We're just gonna count that one as an outlier though, because that thing's more like a tablet. I'm expecting if you have guy jeans that have deep pockets that you should be just fine, although you'll probably feel a bulge against your leg. That doesn't sound right. For ladies, you may want to keep this in your purse. For me, I'd probably just keep it like this anyway. There's really not that much I can do, and if I want it accessible, well, this is really my only option. But you can see, it's really not a pocket-friendly fella. So thank you everybody for watching. This has been Erica, the technology nerd who likes to film stuff. Please rate, comment, and subscribe. I'm just gonna stay here on the floor for right now. iPhone 6 Plus, I still have a lot of things to test. I've been hearing not so good things about the audio recording, at least in video. So I wanna test that out. I also have a place to go where I want to test out the optical image stabilization. I want to test out performance. There's a lot of things that I want to test out with this phone. Please ask me in the comment section below anything that you want to know about this before I get up to the actual review. I don't know what the format of the full review is going to be like. I don't know if it's going to be an all you need to know or if it's going to be piece by piece by piece. We will see. But I will do plenty of coverage on this device. So please ask me questions and also please check the link in the description to Google Plus because that's where I post a lot of things. Especially as I am leading up to a review. I will post a lot of different things on there, my findings as I'm going along reviewing a phone. So now it is time to edit this. I will get it up as soon as possible. And my goal in life right now is just to go to bed. So good night everyone!